All right, welcome back to the 2023 PDGA Amateur Disc Golf World Championship. I'm Pavo Stubstad with Central Coast Disc Golf, joined by Jake Peters, also from Central Coast Disc Golf. Hello again. On the front nine, we saw some open shots, we saw some wooded shots, we saw some uphill shots and downhill shots and some water carries and some deer. And we're going to see a lot more interesting golf on the back nine as well as we follow Nikolai Mikkelsen, Ryan Mulder, Axel Olsen, and Peter Green out here at Wildlife Prairie Park Disc Golf Course. Be sure to check out the front nine if you missed it. This is one of the most interesting and unique courses I have ever had the pleasure of filming as a camera operator. Here we see the front nine scores. Nikolai sitting at even, struggling a little bit. Uh, Ryan Mulder started off great, but had some struggles on hole nine with that triple bogey. Axel Olsen is sitting four down and Peter Green finishing the front nine with a five hole birdie streak, sitting at five down. First hole on the back nine here is hole 10, par three, 284 feet straight off the tee and then steep uphill at the very end. The nickname for this hole is the Monarch Midrange. If you missed it on the front nine, every hole out here at this course has a nickname shown on the tee sign. Oh no. Wow, very that, fortunate kick. That was some tree love right there. He is still going to have a putt. Axel Olsen up next. Pure. Right into the hillside. Man, it's hard to stick that hillside. It is so steep. Nikolai a little bit low. Still at the base of the hill, though. Should be a long putt. Great shot from Ryan. Yep. Kind of seems to be the play, huh? Right in the middle of the side of the hill. Yeah. Let it work up. Smash it into the hill and hope it slides up a little ways. Sit. Well, at least he stayed up top. Oof. Kind of scary one there. Oh, wow. Mm. That was nerve-wracking. At least it <laughs> stayed up there. Of course, he wanted the birdie, but oh, avoiding God. the rollaways out here is a tough thing to do. We saw a pretty bad one on the front nine. Actually, a couple. Of course, is very prone to rollaways. I will say that. Now Ryan stays up top as well. Nobody making their birdie putts, but at least everybody stayed up on the plateau. No mm. way. That seemed pretty strong. It's pretty strong side. That's one of those like 70-30 putts, you know, 70% chance it sticks, 30% chance it doesn't. Kind of unfortunate. Definitely not as bad as Peter's spit out on hole one on the front nine. That's kind of one of the worst I've ever seen, if I'm being honest. Not that time. Yeah. Same spot. Same exact spot. Yeah. And that putt was in. much harder. Right. Power-wise, you know, not difficulty-wise, but power-wise than, than the one that spit out. So you never know. It can happen on any basket. It's just part of the game, unfortunately. Yep, unfortunate bogey there from Nikolai. Taking another look at Ryan's drive there. I love that huck face with the open mouth. It's almost like a, a power yell, huh? Yep. And another water hole, hole 11, par three, 378 feet. And you got to carry the majority of that 378 feet if you want to get to the other side of the water. There are some trees that block the backhand hyzer. So the ideal line is actually well suited for Peter here. It's kind of a, just a straight forehand with a fade at the end. Oh, get out of that, get out of that. Or a flex. He seems to be a bit worried. He just clips. Oh, yeah, he's fine right there. 20 to 25 feet. Not bad at all. And this hole is called the Salamander Splash. <laughs> that's a good one. I don't know if we're going to beat the one called Otter Slide on the front yeah, line, though. That, that's probably going to remain my favorite, but we'll see. 
Another great shot there. Brian going for the high wide hyzer. Kind of just flirting with the trees, but gets through, and he's got a putt for birdie as well. Almost caught the hat. That oh, looks a bit wide. On. Can it make it back? Oh, yeah. It wasn't too wide at all. The disc had enough stability, and he's going to be about 20 feet. Four great drives. On Absolutely. A, not a very easy hole. 378. Yeah, that's too bad he left that putt a little bit low. Yeah. Come on, Peter. No, you didn't just oh, man. Yeah. A couple missed opportunities there. Well, two more players. Let's see if we can get a couple birdies at least. The bird. There we go. A little bit right side. Good birdie from Axel. Nikolai's got this. Good bird. Good putt, good putt. Looked like he was second guessing himself a little bit there, perhaps after the mishap on the previous hole. It's tough to bounce back from something like that. A couple pars, a couple of birdies. Not bad. I'm sure those guys wish they made their putts, though. I love this slow-mo shot from Keenan. Watch the hat. Tries to catch it. Oh, almost. Tries to catch it again. Oh, <laughs> watching the shot is more important than catching the hat. Definitely. I can't blame you for that one, Nikolai. We'll, we'll let it slide, buddy. We'll let it salamander or splash, I mean, sorry. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up, hole 12, par 3, 290 feet. Nice flat shot. All of a sudden, it kind of feels like we're on a different course. Grassy fairway, little technical green here, but narrow fairway all the way down. And as you can see, extremely brutal rough on both sides. A little inside, short. Decent result given how low and inside that was. It didn't go in the rough. It skipped forward. And uh, this one is called Frog Hop. Maybe that was a frog hop that his disc just did there. <laughs> Nikolai, too low. Too bad. Oh, no. Wait. Oh, no. That might be trouble. Man, that's frustrating. And this hole shapes perfectly for a righty forehand, too. You know he was hoping to get a birdie on this one. That's what you're looking for there. I just tickled mm -hmm. some branches. It was perhaps a little bit high. The, the low ceiling makes this even trickier. It, it lo kind of looks like it's not going to be that tricky, but it has a lot more teeth than it would seem. And here you can see how bad this rough is. Yeah, anywhere. Wow, he's Somewhere absolutely right buried in there. He's probably only 10 feet in there, and we couldn't even see him. Had to ask a competitor to move his bag for him after he <laughs> went in there. He realized that's exactly where he was trying to pitch out to. Come on. Just go. Just go. Yeah, great third shot. And that's a penalty, right? Hitting your own bag? Or anyone's bag? Yeah. What's the rule it's on that? It's a two-stroke penalty, in oh, fact, wow. if you hit your own bag or... Well, it's a two-stroke penalty for the person whose bag was hit. If that's your own, it's a two-stroke penalty for you. If you okay. hit someone else's bag, it's a two-stroke penalty for them. It is your responsibility to keep your bag out of the way of your own shots and other players' shots. Right. But, of course, he wasn't close to hitting the bag because he asked someone to move it out of the way before he pitched out. And he was not trying to climb back in there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Great bid from Ryan there. That would have been a cool one to see go in. Yeah, he's feeling a little bit frustrated. I'm sure he was hoping to do better than how he's shooting so far. He is one of the highest rated players at the event. Peter, unfortunately, missing his putt for bogey there. 
And there's oh, a double. Unfortunate after such a solid front nine, finishing the front nine on five birdies in a row, and now starting the back nine going par, par, double bogey. Let's see if he can turn it around for the rest of the round. Good par save from Axel. He's keeping a solid round together here, five down through 12 holes. Ryan and Nikolai saving the pars as well. You could tell Nikolai wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Uh, Nikolai wanted to reach out and drop it in, couldn't quite reach, and, and had to reset to do a normal putt. Taking another look at Ryan's form here. As you could see the T sign there, noting the nickname Frog Hop. Moving on to hole 13. Uh, players, for some reason, are playing the short tee on this one, which is only 200 feet. It's either a little chip forehand or maybe a backhand putter straight at it or overstable mid-range to the right. But as you can see, the uh, chip shot forehand is really the most open line available. Yeah, I kind of didn't really understand why they played the short on this one. Did you see that drone fly? It was like three seconds. Yeah, it was yeah. so I mean, quick. The hole's only 200 feet. The long tee on this is 376. So I'd like to see that someday. But for now, it's kind of a birdie or die hole, which, frankly, this course has a lot of difficult holes. So maybe they just wanted to mix it up with an easier one here. Or it could have something to do with course flow. I think it was a lot longer of a walk to the true, long tee. True, true. Don't want to create any more backups than we already had to deal with. Three solid shots so far. Oh, and this one is called the Billy Goat Climb. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Go in. He was worried, but great result there. Yeah, I think he was worried it was going to fade down the hill, but didn't go too far as he is the farthest yeah. out. Good putt, good birdie, and I got to imagine we're going to see a star frame here. Yeah. At 200 feet, that's light work for these guys. Easy. And from what I can tell, these guys all have great flicks. So it's really not a problem here. Another look at Peter's putt being the longest of the four, although it was pretty short. Good birdie, Peter, and good birdie, everybody else. And we'll be right back. I can't believe it. You're up next. Uh oh! Oh no! Ew. Wow! Alan so that's in a, bounds. That's exactly. She. I mean, Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> the challenger is consistent not only on the putting green but also throwing as an approach disc. With the challenger, you're getting a really straight flight, whether it be five feet or 120 feet you can just really spin it and trust that it's just going to hold right where you aim. And we're back. Hole 14, par 3, 360 feet. Water carry the entire way. Basket very close to the water. And this one is called the turtle toss. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Axel, nice high hyzer. Does it have the distance? Oh, absolutely. Great shot. I just love these pawn shots, man. It changes the whole feel of the course. Please say it's far enough. He's talking to it. Man, it Made works. It. Yeah, he was worried it wasn't far enough, but that was perfect, man. He's parked. Great shot, Nikolai. Higher than the other throws. Man, these guys are making this hole look easy. I'd be a little nervous playing this one. Mm -hmm. I'd be throwing a backup disc, that's for sure. P 
Peter with a nice forehand there. Puts him about circle's edge. And he is the farthest out. No, no, no. Oh. Oh, man. And yeah, you can also did do the, uh, find the water. Right here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Oh. I can have it here. One, two, three. So it's like it here. There. Here. 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 I go like right here. Yeah, we take yeah. it. Is that good? Yeah. Is that good? You can do that. All right. Little discussion about where exactly the OB line started since there was no painted line and there was kind of some mud and stuff. Oh! No. No, no, no. did it? No way. It went back in the water. <laughs> no way. I don't have another putter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He lost I, both his putters. I mean, well, honestly, well. hats off to Peter there for that reaction because a lot of players would get really pissed well, off in that situation and he just yeah. laughs it off like, wow, both my putters are now in the in the pond. Nikolai, nice enough to get that one for him. Yeah, Nikolai just kind of taking charge with that, huh? Yeah. Helping his brother out. Oh, man. Gosh, that wasn't even that far off, man. That was kind of scary. At least it didn't roll again, I guess. Yeah, but that's, that's what I was thinking. That is a tough pill to swallow for Peter, man. He's four down. His front nine was so solid. Starting to bounce back on the back nine after that double bogey. He bounced back with a birdie. Still had a solid round going. And here the entire rest of the card is tapping in for birdie. And Peter is going to be taking a quadruple bogey with two penalty strokes after putting for birdie. That's just really unfortunate. Poor guy. I don't know. What was he, 30 feet away? Something like yeah, that? About circle's edge, putting for birdie. Oh, man. And, you know, the air ball, I guess, was his fault. But the next putt almost made it. And the roll away on a flat green back to the water. I mean, that is really bad luck. Good birdie putt from Axel there. And moving on. To hole 15, par 3, 345 feet. Nice, straight, grassy, park golf type shot. All the holes are different out here, man. I love it. This one's called Beaver Dam, which is odd for a hole that doesn't have any water, but hey. Yeah, I don't see it. That's a little too turned. Ooh. Uh, it looked like it stayed on the edge of the rough there. He didn't go in too deep. Mm, not so bad. Oh, be lucky. He, he doesn't like it. Oh. Yeah. He clipped. Edge of the fairway. That's looking good from Ryan. Tiny bit too low, man. Another couple feet of height, and that would have been perfect. Still, putting for birdie. All right, let's bounce back, buddy. No. Looks decent. Turn over mean? a little too much, but he'll have a putt from there. Yeah. Cool angle there on this throw. Oh, man, almost threw it in. Nice. Long birdie look from Axel. Had the height. Just a little bit left side. Yeah. Nice. Solid putt from Peter. Man, bouncing back with a birdie after the double bogey and bouncing back with a birdie again after the quad bogey. He's got a strong focus. one. Exactly what I was going to say. He's got a good mental game, at least. <laughs> He's he, staying positive. He, yeah, he was in a good mood the whole time, even after something like that. I, hats off to him, man. That's a yep. tough thing for a lot of players to do. Mm -hmm. There you go. Ooh, that almost yeah. bounced out of the bottom of the bucket. That was mm -hmm. weird. Solid putt, though. It didn't look like there was much wrong with it. Good birdie, Ryan. Yeah, par save from Nikolai. Well, 
wonder what he was looking at there. It's kind of interesting. It looked to me like he thought maybe the chains were tangled up. You know, sometimes you see players walk up and straighten yep. a chain if it's tangled in another one, and then he realized that they were not tangled. They were just swinging from the previous player having made a putt. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolai, what a character. <laughs> Gotta love He's those aw- Danes. He's awesome. Give him the old Danish shake. Sick putt. Such a good putt from Peter. After that rough hole, too. That was fun to watch. On to hole 16. A brutal par 3 at 435 feet. This one's called Cougar Canyon. And you got to watch out. The Cougars will kill you on this hole because... (laughs) Uh, it's it's almost impossible to birdie. I mean, you got to flirt with the high ceiling. It's down a huge hill, up another hill, over a crest, down another hill again. Maybe someone could birdie it with a perfect shot, but it almost plays as a par four. Yeah, this is one of the craziest par threes I've ever seen. So I was thinking to myself, if the basket had been where I'm standing, it would have been still a really tough par three. And the basket's about 110 feet beyond that. So give you a little perspective there. Yeah, it's like to, to reach the green, a player would have to flirt with that branch, that dead branch you see in the middle of the fairway and just get within inches of it with the perfect height and the perfect amount of flip to flat and fading at the right time to get over the crest of the hill toward the green. And even then, I think even the best possible shot, you'd be left with like a 60 foot putt. Right. So I I could definitely see this one being called a par four. It it is a bit of a tweener. Wow, great shot there. He's got a putt for par. Great upshot. And these upshots, as you can see, are all blind to the players because you go up over the crest of this hill and then back down the other side. Mm -hmm. And those shots off the tee were not that bad, and they're still having to throw these, you know, big hyzers over this hill. I think if Peter was another 15 feet forward, he would have been able to see the pin from there. Or maybe he could actually see it, and we just couldn't see it from the camera. He was close to the top of the hill. Oh, nice. oh, he's hyped. He's Great so putt, Nikolai. Good meters. Good meters, huh? <laughs> Great meters. Those are the best meters. He's feeling it. I think these guys are going to be okay with these pars, huh? I think so. I think they're all kind of looking at it uh, as a birdie. I understand and, that there uh, have been no birdies on this one. Nope, that one. But when you see it from here, it's like... <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was about to mention it, but then we just heard Nikolai say it there. We checked the stats, and zero players birdied that hole today, yeah. which is not surprising at all. So we take another look at Nikolai's drive here as he crouches down to see where it's going off of this very unique tee shot here. I love how he talks to the disc like that. Yeah. He really gets into it. Moving on to hole 17, a 445 foot par four. It's slightly uphill or maybe a little more than slightly uphill off the tee and then a hard dog leg left up to this plateaued green. I could see big arms getting you know, to the base of the, the steep hill at the green and giving themselves a long look for Eagle, but I'd say this is a true par four. Definitely. You got to be able to have like 500 feet of power on a hyzer to to get a you know edge of circle two putt right. and hit a perfect line. Yeah, I was gonna say while maintaining that straight shot for yeah. so long, low ceiling. Can't do that. Oh man, Peter cut rolling into the rough on the right side. Wondering if there's some sort of crazy Simon line. I don't know. Nice shot, Axel. That's the shot right there. Yep, that, wow, that's what I was talking about. So he actually has a putt for eagle. What an impressive tee shot. 
Oh, go under. Oh, that was so big. That did not go under. No. That's a tough stance. Great shot. Yeah, considering that lie, that was pretty much the best he could do. Mm -hmm. Looking oh. like a roller of some sort. Oof. Great ground play there. Just down the hill to the right. Should be able to run that one. Going for another roller. Oh no, just to the other side now. Yikes. Ah, oh, poor guy. Playing some army golf on this one. Yeah, he is. Left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> Punch out. He got out of the rough, but he did not get up to the green. Yeah. Poor Peter, man. His round was all over the map. You can see he has the skills to put together a solid round. He just had a couple holes where he struggled. I guess that's kind of what you get with the course with so many different shots, you know. There's yeah. always going to be a hole that can take out any of the best players. Another tricky green. Nikolai was struggling with his footing a little bit there on that one. We didn't really see out there. He slipped a little too, yeah. but even standing at his lie, he kept he kept sliding and having to reposition his foot behind his mini. He was talking about how he has plenty of trees to contend with on courses that he plays in Denmark, but he's not used to playing on hills because Denmark is a very flat country. Oh, okay. Funny note about that, actually, the tallest point in Denmark is on what the rest of the world would probably just call a hill. <laughs> uh, it's about 500 feet above sea level, but since it's the highest point in Denmark, they call it Himmelbjau, which translates to Sky Mountain, <laughs> and it's just under 500 feet. That's awesome. Taking another look at Peter's forehand roller here. Of course, normally we like to show replays of good shots, so I'm sorry, Peter, for uh, showing everybody this, but I thought your reaction was so great, so we included this one. <laughs> you didn't like the result, and... Uh, the old dead uh, man. He's done. <laughs> he's done. Hole 18, par 4, 663 feet, downhill shot off the tee, OB beyond the road there to the right, the dirt road. If you go in the tall grass, it's OB and then a technical protected green. So it's kind of just, if you're a backhand player, it's Heiser Heiser. Four. Thank you for playing. Yeah. Pretty weird round. Tell you that much. Weird round, yeah. I think this course probably leads to a lot of weird rounds. Definitely. All the rollaways and different things that can happen. And I actually forgot to mention the nickname for hole 17. I've done the other 16, so I got to mention it. It's Coyote Crossing, and then hole 18 here is Final Paw. Lots of wildlife-themed nicknames. I said it on the front nine. I didn't think anyone was going to top Otter Slide, the super steep downhill hole on the front nine, and that is still my favorite yeah. after reading all 18 of them. Absolutely takes the cake. But uh, my hat's off to whoever came up with these names. That's It's kind of cool. I think more courses should do that. I yep. like the idea. Yep, I love it. I feel like the only thing that could have been better would have been Baby Otter Slide. I mean, <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Who doesn't love Baby Otters? <laughs> and Nikolai with a great drive there to the left side of the fairway. And Peter is going to try to throw a huge Anheuser forehand oh, out there. No but he did not turn it enough, and that is fading way out into the OB. Yeah, that's a tough shot there. That, that's, that's a risky to go with a forehand on exactly. this Exactly. It's a backhand hole for sure. Nikolai, blind second shot, has to throw a nice high hyzer, see if he can get into the green. Yeah, great Bonk. shot from where he was. Yeah. 
He's going for it again, huh? That one looks good. There it is. Yeah, he has great control with that forehand. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he has the skill to make the tee shot work, too. He just didn't quite get the snap he was looking for. There's another one. Not too shabby. Long look for birdie from there. Ryan running out to see the result of his shot. Great shot there. Yeah. It's kind of the play on the up shot. Just smash into the trees and hope it drops in. Am I allowed to move this Interesting oh. thing here, Pablo. What's going on? I think so. Yeah, I mean it's dead. But it, half of it's in front of my lie, half of it's behind. You mean this one here? Yeah, well, kind of where my mini's on. <laughs> Ryan! I don't know if I'm allowed to move this or not. Well, I mean, if your right foot, if you're gonna put your right foot on where the the mini is, then well, yeah, it would be in your lie. Yeah, I want to. I want to put my saying. foot here. You that can, would be. You can move the first log, yeah. 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 So I can move this, even yeah. though it's part of its in front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, just hold hold your mini though. All right. Yeah. No, you're good. You're good. You got it. <laughs> Don't yep. gotta do that. Uh, that was the correct call from Peter there. If any part of the thing that is dead and unattached is in your lie area, that eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper we all like to visualize behind our lie, then you can move it. It doesn't matter if part of it is in front of your lie, as long as part of it is in your lie and it is dead and unattached, then you can move it. Gotcha. Even though he made that putt, he's looking a little defeated, huh? Yeah, man. I mean, it was a rough round for him. He was five uh -huh. down after the front nine, and he <laughs> finished at one over with two doubles and a, and a quad on the back. Tough. And I should mention, because somebody will probably notice, that we can't see his quad in the scorecard there in the bottom. We actually didn't have a graphic for a quad, so that one is just showing up as a par. Hopefully we can address that in the, f in the future and get a quad bogey graphic. Ryan finishing on a birdie, putting him at two down. He had some struggles on the front nine, but his back nine was solid. But uh, Axel Olsen here is really the story of the day, putting together a really solid round, playing great through the front nine and back nine, bogey free, I believe, finishing at eight down. Take one final look at Ryan's form here. Love that huck face. <laughs> he got some camera time today for sure. And here we take a look at our top 10. You can see Axel is tied for the lead with Chuck Hoffman and Carson Smith. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be moving over to Northwood Black, which is known as one of the hardest, if not the hardest course in the country, or maybe even the world. I'm not sure, but it's an extremely challenging and technical track that I'm sure many of you are familiar with from tournaments like Ledgestone or any other tournament in Peoria that utilizes the courses at Northwood Park. So I'm excited. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pavo Stubstad, and I was joined today by Jake Peters of Central Coast Disc Golf. And we'll see you tomorrow for Northwood Black. Looking forward to it. See you tomorrow.